All right, everyone. Good afternoon. Happy rainy Saturday for all of you who are watching this today and are in Baltimore. Let me introduce myself because you may not know who I am. I am Lucelania and I am the woman behind Charm City Live Music, your go-to, your plug, so to speak, for all live music entertainment in and around Baltimore. And today we have a really, really special opportunity where we are going to talk to the co-director of the Baltimore Rhythm Festival, Manesh Yehuda, and a very special guest that is going to be performing at their fundraiser concert on Thursday, April 6th at Motor House. And so we're going to talk about Baltimore Rhythm Festival. If you've never been to the Baltimore Rhythm Festival, then you definitely need to plan to go. But in the meantime, you can get a taste of what the Baltimore Rhythm Festival is on Thursday, April 6th at Motor House, and we're gonna find out more about the mission of the festival, the fundraiser, who's gonna be there, what is happening. Thank you for coming on and joining. I hope you guys are dry and enjoying your Saturday. Um, for those of you who are in the rain, I um, ventured out this morning, um, and so it is nasty out there. But we are going to have a good time um, and I'm grateful to be a community sponsor for the Baltimore Rhythm Festival and the fundraiser. See my brother Mark just joined. Hi, good afternoon. Rory and Derek and Obino and HBNY Light. So good to have you guys on. Nice to meet you. I hope make yourselves comfortable, take your shoes off. Uh, let's get to know each other a little bit while uh, we are waiting for them to join. Um, hello, MSU Prison One. Nice to have you on again. Uh, my name is Lucelania, and thank you. Of course, it, this is Charm City Live Music is my love letter to Baltimore. I love music. I love the people who make the music that create the soundtrack of our city, uh, Baltimore. As hopefully you all know, is a beautiful city with so much culture. And I just wanted to participate and be able to give back to the city that has given me so much um, musically and otherwise. And so I do this for the musicians. I do this for the lovers of music, the fans of music, uh, and, you know, to spread the love, to bring more good attention to our city. We already get enough of the other stuff. Um, I'm also, oh, and they, you know, very protective of our, of our city. So I also don't, like, I want people to know, but I also don't want it to, uh, and we are short. Except. All right. And there we go. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing good. I can't complain. I was like, staying dry, hopefully. Uh, well, yeah, I'm actually standing out in the rain. It's nice. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. So, how's it been? It's been a while since we last saw each other. Thankfully, this time Instagram is cooperating with us. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I believe so. I hope so. <laughs> um, yeah, a lot has changed since uh, last time we 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 talked. Um, so you know, we're just continuous with our efforts and. Uh, trying to bring uh, arts into uh, Baltimore with everyone else that's doing it, the collective of people in Baltimore that's doing, using art as their form of, uh, uh, I guess, revolution and expression of um, containment that's trying to happen right now. Yeah. Yes. So, I love that. And so um, we literally uh, um, are preparing with this fundraiser that's coming up on Thursday, April the 6th from four to seven. Um, and we have uh, uh, Mama Wow, Mama Walks on Water. Um, but we um, uh, um, we know her growing up as Mama Natasca, and then oh. she changed her name over uh, Beautiful uh, Mama Elder um, in the communities. And uh, I don't want to speak too much about uh, what she does and how she do it because I would like for her to speak for herself. I'm trying to get her on here now. Um, so let me, if you give me a minute and then I can hop right back in so I can get on. Most All definitely. Right. All right. Okay. Hold on for that. Okay. Okay.
So yeah, so we're gonna be joined by Mama Walks on Water. I'm excited to meet her. Um, if, oh, there she is. Uh, if you don't know um, who she is, she is the mother of Mumu Fresh, but so much more. She's a singer, a healer, a, a lover of, of the womb. She's a, so I'm excited to get to know her better, to find out more about what she's going to be offering to us at the fundraiser. Um, and so, yeah, yeah, so if you're on, if you go down to the camera with the plus button and just request to join, I think I can, then I can accept you and then we can get her on. Yeah, mama, I'm going to uh, be uh, join into the video. Oh, I can also invite. So I'm going to invite her. Okay, cool. As well. So you you should have gotten a invitation to accept. It should be at the bottom of your screen and There right. she goes. Hold on, wait a minute. You... <laughs> <laughs> All right. You can hear me, yes? Thank you, my yeah, Hello. Yes, Hello, my darling. How you? I'm doing well. Doing? I'm feeling pretty good this morning. Um, I slept with my yeah. with my grounding pad on the bed last night because I was I caught something on the flight coming back from Texas last week, and it was just trying to hang on me. But then when I put the grounding pad on, um, I started to feel better. Because if it, if it was summertime, I would sleep outside on the ground to heal myself. But since it's still cold, then mm. I have to use the grounding pad on the bed until it gets warm enough for me to sleep outside. Are you teaching already, Mama Water? <laughs> it's so Thank nice you. to meet you. <laughs> so we are looking forward to the fundraiser concert on Thursday. Can you give us a little taste of what people can expect well um from I, you, I, I want to to help us understand the, the power we have inside of our body with our sound mm -hmm. with our breath mm -hmm. because, because we are the sound magician everybody in the world mm -hmm. looks to us to see what they should do and there are you know people that are identified as black, black all over the world but there is something particularly special about us here in Turtle Island. We never mm -hmm. look outside of ourselves to see what other people are doing, but everybody looks at us to see what we're doing. And those are the things we should pay attention to. What is it inside of us that is so interesting to the entire world? You can't go to a single country on this planet where the young people are not imitating what we have created and so I want to assist us in taking it our sound more seriously um, they, they have mm -hmm. in quantum physics they have figured out how to use sound to break up kidney stones and you know to be able to um, bust open atoms and it just goes to show you how important sound is how important our breath is. Our, our breath is the only mm -hmm. thing we can't live without. We can lose limbs, right. we can get a heart transplant, but when you take, take your last breath, you're finished with this part of your journey. And so, so I want us to take a look at that. How does that feel? What is, what is possible with our physiology concerning our breath and sound? Mm. That's so powerful. Like I, I'm tingling right now just to hear you speak about about that and just to call us to attention about our power and how we can use it versus it always being taken from us. And you use the gift That's so system. beautiful. I'm excited. You know, everybody, somebody, people that that are are running this this corporation that we live in called the country, they know know these things and they know where the sound is coming from. And so, so we have to be able to 
to take back that which belongs to us, which was given to us. You know, that, mm -hmm. that thing that, that globally everybody looks at us and goes, wow, wow, how can I do that? Like we noticed that uh, America is flooded with uh, black people from Britain, actors and actresses, and they, mm -hmm. they are yeah. imitating us. I mean, I can't. <laughs> they are imitating us completely. They have studied us. They pay attention mm -hmm. to us. They, even the way that, that the black British people, like I watch a lot of movies, so I'll see, you know, black British people in London and England and how they speak British English the way the Anglo-Saxons speak British English. But we totally yeah. changed English because these Anglo-Saxon people here, they're British. And so mm -hmm. how is it that when you come to the United States of America, you can't understand anybody if you learn British English because we hijack yeah. the sound. And mm -hmm. everything we do, if you look at any movies, every part of who we are is in all American movies. Like we hijack the whole culture with our sound, with our, with our language, with our style, with our um, ability to, to make things more fluid and more juicy and more beautiful. To pay attention mm -hmm. to that, because we don't we don't imitate the, the the British people, but they certainly do imitate us. Mm -hmm. So who are we? Who are who are we? Yeah. So that's what I want to discuss with that. So important. It's such a such a rich and important and needed conversation. Um, and it's going to be an honor to sit at the elders' feet and to, to learn and to glean from you. And as a community, you know, musically, but just as a, the Black community, like, that is such a, a rich conversation. So if you guys are not planning on, if you have not bought your tickets, let this be your invitation to go. The, the link is in my bio as well as in the bio for Baltimore Rhythm Fest to go buy your ticket so we can see you on Thursday at Motorhouse for the fundraiser. You do not want to miss, you don't want to hear about this from someone else. You want to be in the room. So you can get this for yourself. Yes, 4 to 7 p.m., 4 to 7 p.m. Children are welcome. Families yes. are welcome. All right, 4 to 7, yes. yes. So, so this is gonna start with the drum circle, right? Yes. So the Baltimore Rhythm Festival definitely is something that is uh, based out of the drums inside of the park. It was created um, years ago um, in the late uh, 80s going into the 90s. And then uh, myself and uh, Roy Turner, uh, we spoke with uh, John Millen uh, to continue it, uh, to revamp it. Um, um, and just to try to uh, rekindle this thing. And as we see, you know, like one of my teachers, Dr. Jovi say, you know, even the people in the village has a voice. Mm -hmm. So everyone isn't going to be a professional drummer. Some people just want to come in the space and just put their hand on the skin. But there are levels to these uh, frequencies or these rhythms that we create. And so, you know, at some particular point, you know, people in the village want to be able to come together and play as well. And so there's a community drum circle that basically is like the fuel of the festival. These guys, uh, Drew Hill Park drummers, park drummers have been uh, the backbone of this festival since the inception. And uh, Drew Hill Park has been the melting pot for artists and musicians and just community to come together since the 70s. Um, and so uh, this is in, 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 in any of the cities and uh, states around the United States, around the country. Um, we have these uh, places where people come together with the drum. And regardless of how it was taken away from us doing um, slavery and Jim Crow and things like that, you know, one thing about DNA, it's going to form itself back. Mm -hmm. And so if it's something inside your ancestral memory, then you want to remember it. And that's the reason why we're doing what we're doing. It's so that when frequency is currency and people is currency, and the more we come together and understand these things, then we can make it better because we're able to talk and speak about what's on our minds, what's on our hearts. If we don't get a chance to do that, then we're just going into the future uh, 
the same way that we were doing it when we were trying to uh, march for our rights, mm -hmm. right, against a, a, a group of people who were not trying to hear us. But now that the universe is opening up, we have possibility to speak truth to power, yes. and that power is going to stand and carry you on on its own, regardless if we're here or not, because it's going to come through the youth. The youth are doing mm -hmm. <laughs> So literally, we just want to, uh, Mama Wallace, somebody that came to mind for me, uh, because, um, like I said, as a child, I used to watch, uh, you know, a lot of people were talking about Mamuna, Mumu Fresh, mm -hmm. and uh, I love Mamuna, that's my sister, but the one my generations and the and the ones that know Mama Wall, uh, at that time Mama Natasca uh, was the songbird, uh, mm -hmm. and when, when you would be in that space as a child and when she was sing, you could see the different colors in the room change. You can mm -hmm. see time, space, and continuum change. And so, what we literally want to do is, uh, you know, give people their their, their flowers. Remember, um, um, I've I've connected back with Mama um, because. Uh, um, my daughter, um, uh, coming to this world, my daughter has, uh, or they say she has Down syndrome. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, uh, Mama Wild's, uh, son, uh, Sequoia, um, uh, that was my first introduction and relationship to someone who has Down syndrome mm -hmm. and one of the most loving spirits that I ever met in my life. You, you not, you, you could have not been around him for years and when he see you. He come and hug you as if you were uh, you went to sleep the night before in the same house, wow. and if you had a heart, heart of gold, that he showed that to you. And uh, so I was able to go down and go down to the land because Mama Wall is deep, deep. And a lot of us, uh, where things are going right now, a lot of us need to get back to um, this earth that we 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 stand on and we walk on. Um, because when it's all said and done, when the facade is down, what are we going to do? You know, what can you, what, what tools do you have? What skills do you have? And so I asked Mama to come from out the sacred grove. <laughs> now I asked her to come up here and uh, out the country, out the bush, and uh, and come and sing. Um, you know, you, you have certain birds that's in the forest that some people don't get a chance to see. Mm -hmm. you know, I just asked her to come and uh, and and shine. And just like that sun just opened up. <laughs> 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 the divine, just like. <laughs> yeah, and um, and we have to do this because here in Baltimore we have some, uh, we have some warriors here that people don't know anything about. That's mm -hmm. been uh, helping to keep this energy inside of Baltimore uh, way before you know the college boomers. You know, we're talking about going back to the Melanin Conference and when people in our community were trying to get things together so that people can have an understanding of consciousness, even if it wasn't um, uh, uh, popular, even if it wasn't the fashion statement, uh, people in our community were bringing people here, uh, honoring Marcus Garvey, yeah. bless uh, Baba Charles Duggar. Um, and, 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 and this is where, and these, with these things, these artists would get a chance to come around and 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 um and share their culture. And I'm gonna I'm 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 gonna stop right there. But I wanna want you to, if you can explain what it is that you, uh, you and your family bring to share and you, your mom's you know, spirit. Um, uh, wait, you may not know this. But my mother was a choir director, so you know, you know we um we were forced into Christianity by, by the European colonizer. But because it was such a stiff, um, unlovable, unfeeling relationship that they had with who they called their creator, we had to shift it and change it. And we had to, to bring life and spirit to it. And so, you know, even though they introduced us to their form of, of what they call Christianity, we already knew what that spirit was. So we brought that with us. You know, we brought the drum with us. We brought stomping with us. We brought clapping with us. We brought we brought our celebration of our relationship with with the divine creation with us into their form of Christianity. And so we changed it. So now you look on television, and Anglo-Saxon preachers are jumping and speaking in tongues and yelling and dancing and getting the Holy Ghost. That's all our stuff. That belongs to us. 
that's what we bring to the table. We bring the spirit whenever we show up. And so <clears throat> when I was raising my children in Baltimore, um, I have a difference of opinion with everything that America thinks. And I decided to bring my children home because if I left my children with people who disagree with my ideology, my children are not going to think that I know what I'm talking about because they spend eight hours a day with strange foreigners that don't practice our culture. When I first put my son Munir in public school, the teacher asked him what food, what animal does a uh, hamburgers come from? And Munir raised his hand and said buffalo because my children never saw any pigs and cows in the house. There was that, that food didn't exist in my house. I eat bison and you know elk and deer. I eat animals that have not been uh, put on the animal plantation. So these are out eating berries and roots and things that they should eat. They're not in prison, so they have their mentality is free. So if you eat meat, you need to eat meat that has been free on its own in its natural habitat, not animals that are hooked to machines that are never turned off, the lights are never turned off, and they have a milking machine that they hook cows to forever, their entire life until they drop dead. So if you're drinking that milk, then you're already ingesting being colonized, being enslaved. Same thing with chickens. They cut their beaks off so that they don't peck each other because there's too many of them together. And so now here you again, you're eating chicken from random places, and this chicken has been enslaved. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said what to us? You are what you eat. So eating is, is a divine relationship with creation. It is a, a prayer place. It is a place where you want to have the best possible energetics. So I, I decided to homeschool my children because the Anglo-Saxon female teachers acted like they hated my son. They hated the man in my son. They hated the, the testosterone in my son. But I love that in my son. So once they said he couldn't come to school without Ritalin, I'm like, okay, well, that's it. We're gone. We're gone. So I gave my children my blueprint, not the blueprint of somebody else. And even when you don't think that your children heard you or they agree with you, something will will happen that they will just break out with it because th there's a young woman that works works in, uh, with me helping me in the house and she found out that her family is Yoruba I said to her then you have to speak Yoruba so I started teaching her the small amount of Yoruba that I know here comes my son busting out the room hey shede shede dani shesu dada I'm like and you were if you know my oldest son you would never think <laughs> that he remembers anything from his childhood, he is so wild, right? And he comes busting out the room with Yoruba, showing off. So it's really important that whatever your blueprint is, whatever your, your belief is, that that is transferred to your children the majority of time. If you leave your children for eight hours a day for 12 years, your children don't have your ideology. Your ch children believe someone else who doesn't believe in your ideology, and that's a problem for our evolution and our freedom. So, so Mamuna and Mahatra and Munir and Sequoia, I wanted them to understand freedom from my point of view. Because see, I grew up in, during segregation in America. So I only saw Anglo-Saxons on TV in downtown when we went shopping. I had no, no constant contact with them. So therefore, I was steeped in the ideology of my mother and my grandmother and my mm. grandfather and my aunties and uncles who had come from Chicago, come to Chicago from Mississippi. So therefore, even though I was in Chicago, they transferred all of their southernness and their love for the earth mm. and their, um, their way of saving and their way of sharing and their way of, of knowing that they, belong, they deserve to be free no matter what. I grew up in a family that felt like this is my, this is my country, and you can't tell me what I can do in my country. And so my family got everything they needed by any means necessary. And so that was transferred to me, that I don't need to suffer and get a degree from you who are lying for me to have the things that I need. Nope. The things that I need come from what my ancestors gave me. And so we have our children mm -hmm. close to us. 
that's what we can transfer to him. Ramuna learned to sing um, college stomp dance songs, gospel music originally. Before she was ever able to sing with a musician, she had to learn to sing with herself. And, and so for the community that comes out to the fundraiser, I want to share that with you. How do we use sound to remember who we are? Remember who we are. Whew. Well, if you guys aren't ready for Thursday, I am. <laughs> I will be there. I am so excited. And we've gotten so much just in these 30 minutes. Uh, so the the wealth of knowledge and wisdom is being poured out and come out on Thursday from four to seven Motor House to the fundraiser. Link is in the bio to buy your tickets. I will see you there. We will see you there. Thank you so much, mm -hmm. Menace, Mama Wow. Yep. You have some final words that you want to say? I, I can't hear you. I think you're on mute. Keyboard is. Uh... Mama Wild is being accompanied uh, by uh, master musician, keyboardist, artist, Lafayette Gilchrist. Yes. Yes. So, this is, yes. Um, and uh, when I when I actually, I saw in Mama, I was asking about keyboardists and things like that. And um, and uh, she, she, I said, Mama, you know Lafayette? She said, yes, I know Lafayette. I said, uh, I said what do you think about him? And uh, she said, yeah, he, he, he knows who I am. <laughs> and then, so, so I hadn't, I didn't make the move, and then what? And, and um, she called me up because I was, I was just thinking, like, can I get him? Can I get him? And then uh, she, well, I called up one day. She said, "Did you get Lafayette?" I said, uh, uh, "Mom, I don't know. I don't know if we can handle that. I don't know how to handle that." She said, "Call, call him. Handle that." I called the brother. Up. He was more than welcome to come in and and work with Mama. And what he actually said, I was mouth was, "Wow." I haven't seen her in a while. So this is all in divine energy and uh, it's gonna be a great event. And that's just my two cents. Thank you very much for having us. And uh, Mama Wild, before before, uh, before we go, can you give a quick plug with your website and uh, some oh, of the things yeah. that you're hey, doing? So yeah, um, I am, I am um, in the process of, of assisting our people in eating for our blood type. You know, so in Asia, they hire you for jobs and put you together in marriage according to blood type they say that the blood type has a personality that goes with it and many years ago i had seen an article in uh essence and there was a, a, a anglo-saxon woman that was dating a black man and she was saying that black women um, are angry at us because we're dating their men but you don't exercise and you don't lose weight and you don't do that. And I, I was so mad about the nerve of her to say that. And I thought about this for many years because see, I stopped eating cows and pigs when I was 23. And then I just, my, you know, my diet just accelerated from there. But the first, the first thing um, was, was to stop eating cows and pigs because if we, we have native blood and we have African blood, either ancient or, you know, recent, mostly not recent, mostly ancient. And if you have blood from Turtle Island, we don't have pigs, cows, chickens, goats, or sheep in this country. Anglo-Saxons have brought that here. So native people, we have no ability to digest that. And so they mass murdered all of our buffalo. They burnt down our fruit groves to force us to the reservation. And then they sent lard, white flour, and pigs so and sugar so everybody on the reservation right now is suffering from high blood pressure and heart attack and diabetes mm -hmm. same thing in in the african community we can we cannot digest that that is for anglo-saxons i've been to europe and i've been to africa and eating pigs and cows and drinking milk does not bother them but it bothers us and so i have <clears throat> joined in with with my niece and a company that's only four years old that helps us detox our body and our blood type because for instance like old blood type we have a lot of stomach acid we can we are the original hunter gatherers we can deal with meat. any blood type 
or they determinants. They have no stomach acid. They cannot digest meat. So they will end up with a lot of digestive problems. Um, so uh, the website is, let me see. Um, you'll have to look for it. Okay, so the website is, uh, I don't remember it, but I sent it to Maness already. Can you can you look at it, Maness? Are you able to look at it right now? You you went on mute again. Okay. Not at the so moment. Anyway. But what I can do, I'll come back to the video. I'll come back to the link, and then I'll give uh, Sister uh, here the link and see if she can post it, and then I'll do some posting for you. As well. dot com, yep. and they are dedicated to helping us be able to understand what our body needs what blood type we are, you know, having and how we should eat that blood type. And of course, it does include giving up a lot of things that we have adopted eating emotionally from European culture, but something like bread, all right? If you, if, if you have native blood, we were not growing wheat. If you have West African blood, we were not growing wheat. So bread is something that is not for our blood type. It's not for our DNA. So, so but anyway, those are things I'll talk about um, in addition to helping us sound, learn how to sound our body and feel comfortable with our own voice as we use our voice to heal us, as we use our voice to pray, as we use our voice to um, manifest the life we really want, the life we really deserve. All of the, everything we need, every mm -hmm. tool we need is inside of our body. So we'll be helping us learn, understand how to get that sound out into the universe so we can be free at last, free at last. Thank God I'm my free at last. Whew. Thank you so much. Um, definitely the, the website is pinned in the comments and I'll also add it to, um, to the caption of the video once it's saved for anybody that is watching this later. Thank you again. Mama, I, I love you already. I just met you and I love you already. <laughs> so I look forward to seeing you in the flesh. Uh, thanks, Maness, for joining us and sharing about the, the vision of Baltimore Rhythm Fest and what we are to expect on Thursday from 4 to 7, Motor House. Buy your tickets. Be in the place. Link is in the bio. Oh, I think he's coming back. Yep. Let's see. Yep, there he is. All right, any, uh, any final words for I just would like today? to say, you know, uh, spring is here. Uh, we are on spring break in Baltimore City. So, you know, uh, 4 to 7 should be a good time. Even if you can't make it, um, we're taking in donations uh, so that we can make the festival uh, bigger and better this year, more intimate, uh, so we can bring more uh, workshops and performances that can uh, focus and geared towards uh, pretty much anyone that's coming in to get some type of healing modality. So uh, that's about it. Um, happy Saturday and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. And you too. I did See put the Saturday. link in yes. here. Hey, hey, um, I did pay. Hey, uh, the, I found the link for Mama Wild, and I did. Uh, I, po I posted yes. the link to her uh, to her business, uh, the website. Yep, it is there, and um, I'll, I'll also make sure it's in the caption as well. So please support, please, even if you can't come, even if you're not in Baltimore and you believe in what in what is happening here, what we're doing, yeah. buy a ticket anyway. Donate to Baltimore Rhythm Fest. It is a worthy, worthy um, cause, worthy organization. Worthy, we're all worthy. Um, so absolutely, see you guys on Thursday. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. One more thing. And Yes, so ma'am. When you go into the go website, um, you have to set up an account and then you put in flat belly um, detox because we also we also sell um, 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 CBD gummies for pain, um, for, for sleep and relaxation. But at the bottom of the page, you'll see uh, the, the flat belly detox. So either you can, and, and what it does is it, it, it helps you to, um, to do a juice and raw food fast for either seven days or 21 days. And so when you um, sign up, you let me know, and um, I will help to coach you through. Okay. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Yes. Healing the, the body. body. 
Love it. And the mind. Yes. All right. Well, with that, we will leave you again. My name is Lucilania, Charm City Live Music. Right. You guys have a good Thank night. You. Bye -bye. You're welcome.